Hey guys. Hi. It will start. Don't worry. Hi guys. How are you? Good evening. Great guys. Great. So how is everyone doing? I could see. I I today see. Basically, I get a lot of uh, you know. What to say? Queries that sir, you don't reply to our comments at all. So you know, guys. So today we are taking the live session again, where I'm going to focus completely on the comments. As you can see, I have opened the chats here. That's the reason why I could reply to a lot of your comments already. So guys, how's everyone? Hi guys. Hi. How's everyone doing? I was interested in uh, rockets because basically till now, uh, many of you guys might not have seen me taking a class. Uh, you know, for rockets. Correct. So basically, what we'll do, we'll do it for rockets right now. So quickly, give me a yes or a no that how many of you guys are completely into rocket science and aeronautics, aerodynamics, astrophysics, satellites, gravitation, a lot of them. How many of you guys are interested in it? Give me a quick answer. Put it in the chat right now. I'll be definitely looking forward for it. Come on. Come on, everyone. Okay. Great. Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> It's running right now. Oh my God. Is the chat working? Because I can't see anyone's chat. <laughs> okay, great guys. I am a bit skeptical about the chat right now because I can't see anyone's chat getting updated. But that's okay. That's completely fine. Let's get on with it. Let's see what we can do today. Okay, guys. So today, what are we going to do? First of all, for people who don't know me. Uh, here is a quick intro of myself. Uh, today we are basically going to start the Rocket Pro course. Uh, learn it, build it, or launch it. It is a very proud moment for me because this course is back again, only on demand from a lot of you guys students. So, you know, from all of you. It's been in demand for a long time, and we are very happy to launch it again. So basically, for all those students who don't know me and who don't know about this course, Rocket Pro, let me give you guys a small insight. Okay. So guys, my name is Abhishek. Uh, and I'm a master teacher uh, of physics at Vedantu. I personally handle ninth and tenth grade. But apart from that, I'm also an aerospace engineer. Now, many of you guys might not know about that, but I'm also an aerospace engineer, basically. And I love everything about rockets, satellites, space shuttles, space, space science. Uh, you know, anything which you can relate it with rockets and aircraft. It's correct. So today, I will try to have some. Fun with all of you guys talking about these concepts. Shall we get on into it then? All of you guys ready? Shall we get on into it right now? Give me a quick yes into the chats right now. Okay, yeah. So let's go for it. Oh my God, I still can't see your chats. That's pretty interesting. But anyways, we'll go for it. Okay. Yes. Great job, guys. So let's then start right now. So basically, uh, I will give you a problem statement. I'll tell you. You need to prove this, or you need to get a solution for this problem by the end of this session. So let me tell you what is a problem statement as a story. Take okay? it. So ready. So guys, the first thing which I'll be focusing here is this question. That is this particular quote. Keep this in your mind throughout this statement. That is, you have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. Now, basically, many of your parents, no, many of your parents must be. You know, might not be or might be, you know, forcing you guys to go perceive something, right? So perceive something uh, which you guys have to follow. Like many of you guys must be forced to go to a doctor or engineer if you even if you don't want to. Trust me, guys, you don't have to do what you guys want have to do in your entire life. Okay, so keep that in your mind. Moving on forward, right now, a very simple thing. So how do you think the Earth looks like, right, guys? Now, so guys, go for it quickly and tell me how do you think the Earth looks like right now? So, what is your answer? Uh, steroid. I could see Dev Pawan telling me steroid, circle, round, a uh, sphere, geoid, orange. <laughs> It looks like an orange, a sphere, circle, big sphere. Great, very nice, very nice. I could see many of you guys giving me some amazing answer. Basically, I was looking for the word geoid, but a lot of you guys gave me very nice. So basically, guys, if I give you a very simple uh, picture. You guys must think this is how the you know Earth looks like. Yes or no? Correct. This is how the Earth looks like. Yes or no? Yep. Oval. Oh my, blue sphere. Ah, uh, correct. Blue sphere. Correct. So this is how uh, the Earth looks like right now, according to all of us. I also believe it in a completely different way. Ha! Huh, exactly. Correct. Snigda is giving you a very interesting answer. Surrounded with satellites. Isn't it amazing? 
no bhumika is that so let me look into it let me give you the actual picture of the earth by 2000 not even 2018 but this is how the earth look like by 2018 isn't that amazing so basically it does not look like a uh, blue beautiful sphere it looks like basically a dustbin nothing else you guys agree with me or not you guys agree with me it looks like a proper dustbin right so yeah with lots of flash lights exactly right exactly it's like space rubbish exactly so if i just ask you guys what are all those random stuff surrounding the earth what would be your answer who can give me the most precise word go for it guys i'm looking forward for it it's not it's not good no exactly aman what is that what is that it's <laughs> It's it's space junk. Exactly correct, Shreya Kulkarni, madam. Exactly correct. It is space junk. Nothing else. Many of you guys are satellites also. Many of you guys know what are space junk. What is a space junk? Anything which is there in space which is not functioning, that we call it as space junk. If you have a satellite which is not functioning, we'll call it as a space junk. Take it basically. So if I ask you guys a very basic question, look at here very carefully. Starting right from 1957, if you carefully look into it. Starting right from 1957 to 2000, basically 13. From 1957 to 2013, we managed to make the Earth look like a dustbin. Okay. Can anyone tell me why did we start from 1957, not from any other years? Can you guys tell me that? Can you guys tell me that why 1957 specifically? Yes, Harshita, they are definitely satellites. Any ideas why? Come on, quickly let me know. Why exactly 1957? Modernization and technology that is completely true. Factory Aman Sunesh 1957 exactly. Who is that person? That's Dev Pawan. Dev Pawan gave me the exact correct answer. Even Pallavi gave me very nice, very nice Manan. Amazing guys, amazing. First satellite by Aryan. Great job guys. Exactly correct because in 1957 the first space satellite Sputnik one was launched into space. Space starting right from there. we have made the earth look like a dustbin so now let me bring a question to all of you from 1957 till date how many satellites are actually currently revolving around the earth what would be your answer thousands millions correct it could it should be millions it should be lakhs or lakhs great world hacks amazing more than 100 acha so let me take this as a kbc question so guys How many satellites are currently revolving around the Earth? Hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, or one lakhs? Option A, B, C, or D. What is your answer, guys? What is your answer? Any answers to this question? B, C, D. Oh my God! I could see many Ds here. I could see many Cs here. Basically, most of you guys are telling me Ds. Damn! Many of you guys are telling me Ds. Very good. B also. Okay, great. Many people will be as well. Nice, nice, nice. The entire chat is with, filled with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I am really happy that you guys are learning alphabets also right now. Great job, guys. The correct answer comes out to be precisely four thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven satellites is actually revolving around the Earth by August two thousand eighteen with the latest reports. Four thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven. Now it is completely unbelievable that from past fifty-seven years. from not 50 like more than that we managed to just launched about 5000 satellites just 5000 that's not a big number that is not a problem also so 5000 satellite doesn't sound like a big problem correct it's general it's normal 5000 satellite earth is so big 5000 is like chiller pillar but basically the main concept here which we need to understand is ki out of all this 4857 satellites Only one thousand nine hundred and eighty satellites are functional. So basically, fifty percentage of them is useless. Only fifty percentage of them is being functional and helping us to survive. Rest fifty percentage is just there, revolving around the Earth. Now you might be thinking, so what, sir? Let it revolve. It is not uh, having any problem with us. So let it revolve. The problem is, guys. Many of you guys, how many of you guys have seen the movie Gravity? Quickly tell me, how many of you guys have seen the movie Gravity? 
Yes, 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 we are going to come that. How many of you guys? Aman has watched. Basically, see, Gravity is one of my favorite movies. My favorite movie is Interstellar, by the way. But yeah, many of you guys must have watched the movie Gravity. If you have not watched, this is one of the scenes from Gravity. And it can anytime happen in space where you, the astronauts, are working on a space shuttle as a spacewalk. And suddenly, a bunch of these satellites which are non-functional, which we cannot control, which is still revolving around the Earth, comes drastically and hits the space shuttle. It, we lose millions and millions of money there. We use very valuable lives of people. And so if you, know, if you think that this cannot happen, if you think that this cannot happen at all, look at this. This can definitely happen. Those satellites revolving around the Earth can come and just boom with the actual satellites working, which is helping us to survive. Correct. Millions of dollars gone again. So, the question which is right now, that is, so how do we overcome the dangers of this space junk, of this dust bin? How do we overcome? Now, this question, I'm leaving it to you. I will definitely give you the answer but exactly after 30 minutes today. I would like all of you guys to think about it because all of you guys are interested in space and rockets and all. You are not a responsible scientist until unless you know what to do with your invention. Correct? How to overcome the dangers of your invention. So guys, I'm leaving this to you. Correct? So, so we'll do basically uh, at the end of this 30 minutes, I'll ask the same question. If you guys know the answer, put it for me. Otherwise, I'll give you the answer. So keep thinking, guys. So keep thinking guys, keep thinking. Vacuum cleaner, Kumar. <laughs> I could see vacuum cleaner is an answer. Thor hammer, Almas, that's interesting. Thor it seems. <laughs> Your favorite movie is Martian Aman. That's interesting, that's interesting. So guys, basically, let's get it started right now. Now is what we're going to actually understand. What are rockets and aircraft? Still now, we were just enjoying and we were just trying to explain key what is space jump. Okay. So let me start with a very simple question very simple question. The question is this. On which principles of physics do you think rockets work? Let's play KVC again. Here are the options. Newton's first law, second law, third law or conservation of momentum. What is your answer guys? Newton's first law, second law, third law or conservation of momentum. Third law of motion. Nice. Third law. C, B, third law. Nice. Third law of motion. C. Nice. Awesome. Oh my God. It's completely as expected. Many of you guys give me option as C and many of you guys go out with D also. And many of you guys are still going with option A. I really like that. But majority of you guys are going with option C and option D. And there are only two to three students who are actually telling me the correct answer. The principles of physics on which rockets work is actually my dear students. All of them. <laughs> it's not only third law or first law, second law, conservation of momentum. It's actually, my dear students, all of them. Now you must be thinking, sir, how is that even possible? <laughs> how is that even possible? How can you apply all the Newton's laws here? Let me give you an example. And that's why we guys, we all are here from. Okay. So now here, this particular pen, which you see in front of you, okay. <laughs> this pen, which you see in front of you for five minutes, this is your rocket. I want all of you guys to imagine. I know that you guys are amazingly good imaginers and have really good imagination. So here is a rocket in front of you. Let's imagine. So guys, uh, I'll tell you the basics. You tell me which law is it. So let's have a small game here. Tell me guys quickly. Rocket is here. Engine starts functioning. Engine starts functioning. The fire comes out. The thrust comes out. Now tell me quickly, until and unless the thrust comes out, until unless the thrust comes out, is the rocket going to go up? Until unless the thrust comes out, is the rocket going to go up? Yes or no? What is the answer? Right, see, it's common sense. Very good. All of you guys have good common sense, good imagination. It's a straightforward no, sir. The rocket will definitely not go up. That's perfectly correct, guys. Correct? Now, all my brilliant students tell me which law is that? Which law is that? First law, second law, third law. Which law is that? What is the answer? Third law. Oh, oh, oh interesting. No, it's not third law. I'm telling you, it is not definitely a third law. 
It is exactly correct. Who was that? Abhinav Singh gave me the correct answer. It's actually the first law. Exactly correct, guys. It is the Newton's first law. That is nothing but an object continues to be in a state of rest or in motion until and unless an external force is applied on the object. So there, when the rocket is standing straight on the launching pad, it's actually overcoming Newton's first law. Isn't that amazing? I could see, yeah, yes, yes, you also did Pratham. Many of you guys gave me the answer as first law. Let's have a clap for that. Congratulations guys. First law is the correct answer. Exactly correct. So that is where your Newton's first law right now. Take it. Now let's try to apply second law. Then third law also. Now tell me quickly. Now tell me quickly. I will tell you a small story about this. In my college, uh, where I studied aerospace engineering, many of my friends who were learning, had this concept in your brains, had this concept in their minds, you also tell me whether it's there or not. So guys, basically, how many of you guys believe that the rocket is standing straight, the thrust comes out, the force comes out of the gases, it hits the ground, it comes back and takes the rocket up. How many of you guys believe this? Tell me quickly. How many of you guys believe this? Give me a yes or no quickly. You believe? I. Aisha, you believe that? Great. Yes, you believe that? See, many of you guys. Many of you guys say, no, I don't believe it. Not you? I, you believe? Okay. So the belief is that here is your rocket. The gas comes out. It hits the ground, goes back and takes your rocket up. Acha. So I could see many of you guys believe that. Now, let me ask you all the, let me ask all of you guys a question who said yes. And people who said no, congratulations, you got it correct. So people who said yes, think and tell me if this is the scenario. If this is the scenario, how does a rocket, a satellite or any space shuttle actually travel in space? Because in space, I believe there is no land, there is no atmosphere. So how does the rocket travel in space? Does the gas come out till Earth near your house, touches the ground, goes back till space and pushes the rocket? Does that happen? No, right? No, right? That does not happen. Correct? Yes, think. I want all of you guys to think it does not happen at all. So guys, the concept here is, here is where you need to apply Newton's third law of motion. So I want all of you guys to understand it very quickly. Imagine, let me take you to a different page scenario. Yeah, I believe all of you guys can see here. All right, so I want all of you guys to understand. Look at me the screen very carefully. You have a rocket. Let me make a rocket as fast as possible. I'm really sorry for my drawing skills. I know I'm amazing. Here is a rocket. And from the rocket, the thrust is coming out. Okay. Oh my God, what a fire. You see that fire? It's simply cool. So the fire is coming out. So that is the gases getting or the chemicals inside the rocket burning and the gases coming out. My question to all of you guys is the gases are coming outward, downward. So the force applied by the gases is downward or upward? The force applied by the gases is downward or upward? What is your answer guys? Up. Nitya says up. Upward Govind. Nice. Downward. Upward. Down. Up. Okay. My question is see. <laughs> these gases obviously have some mass. Correct. Obviously have some mass and they are coming out of the rocket with some kind of acceleration. Obviously, they are not like Michael Jackson coming slowly. That's not happening. So they're coming with some acceleration. So since they have mass and say they have some acceleration, they obviously have some force. And since they are coming downward, my dear students, the actual answer is downward. Correct? No, exactly correct. So that so the force by the gases is being applied downward. Now, according to Newton's third law, we know that one force cannot exist. There must be a couple of forces. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So this is one action happening of gases coming out and applying a force downward. To this, we have a reaction on the rocket and that reaction must be opposite to the action. So the action is going downward, the reaction must go upward. And that reaction is acting on the rocket and due to that reaction only, the rocket is going up. That's how you apply Newton's second law and Newton's third law, guys. 
on the rocket scenario exactly so the if, so if you imagine that the force applied by the gases downward is f1 and the reaction force on the rocket is f2 then definitely f1 is equal to f2 but in the opposite direction so we'll write down minus f2 right there and that's how you apply third law of motion and second law of motion into the rocket scenario guys congratulations now you have learned the concepts of 9th standard and 11th standard with the example of a rocket claps. Congratulations, you have done it. You deserve clap. Okay, so basically, I believe you guys have done that. You are an 8 Amman, I know Amman. And many of you guys must be from 6 to 8 also. So congratulations guys, you are studying a picture from this part. Okay, so nice one guys, nice one. So we understood that part. Let me ask you a very interesting question, which many of you guys might not know. Let me take you to your tool of this. So guys, think and tell me what is that? Oh, you are from 9th also? Nice. Hey Shobit, hi. Correct? 6th also is there. Hey Aisha, hi. From 6th standard. 8th also Pratibha? Good. So what are these guys? Oh my god. Ah, wings. Fins. <laughs> Propeller. <laughs> Missile. <laughs> <laughs> very nice it's a missile <laughs> oh my god this is this is very interesting Proper, for balance hey hey Mohammed, hi rocket module with air inside oh ho oh, oh. ho I am I am happy that no one is saying it's an helicopter I'm very happy with that pads they are pads support alpha wing booster streamlining oh my god interesting interesting guys basically that's a very small rocket and the name of that particular part is nothing else but my dear students it's called as fin it's a fin it's not a wing wings are for aircrafts and for uh, your rockets you don't have wings you have fins okay the people who have gave me some amazing answers let me ask you guys a very interesting question which is nothing but this why do we have fins static stability dynamic stability rotational stability and that's for show off you know, it looks good. It's the design perspective. Now, many of you guys might not know what is stability only, correct? Many of you guys might not know because many of you guys are from 6th and 10th standard. So, you have not studied stability. So, I'll give you one. I'll give you a small action here. You understand what is it. Take it. So, everyone concentrate. Look at me. Look at me very carefully. Look at me very carefully. What is static stability? I'll tell you with action. Understand. Static stability. Dynamic stability. Rotational stability. And show off, obviously, you know. So now you tell me, guys. Static, dynamic, rotational, show off. What is your answer? Ah, nice. See, the answers are changing a bit right now. The answers are changing a bit right now. You guys are smart. You guys are pretty smart. So guys, A, B, C or D. Very good. Very good. I could see about 90 percentage of you guys are telling me the correct answer. That is nothing but rotational stability. That's amazing, man. That's simply superb. Rotational stability is the answer. Very good. Very nicely done. For this to happen, for to understand this, let me take a small example from cricket. How many of you guys play cricket here? How many of you guys play cricket? Give me a quick guess. How many of you guys play cricket? You play? Nice. Rotation? Oh my god. Yeah, you play? How many of you guys play cricket? Quickly tell me, how many of you guys play cricket? And, and people who play cricket, how many of you guys are good ballers also? How many of you guys are good ballers? Like they know how to ball. Or how many of you guys know the concept of a spin? How many of you guys know the concept of a spin? Ki how do you spin a ball? Correct? How do you spin a ball? Trust me guys, all the ballers have learned the concept of rotational stability, have learned the concept of aerodynamics and that's what you guys are going to learn right now guys. Now I want all of you guys to concentrate here for just two minutes to understand the concept of your life and to be a rock star. Understand this. Okay. How does a baller is able to spin a ball? What happens is the baller basically takes up the ball and you might have seen the action, correct? You 
whenever you have to spin you rotate the ball in a manner you just rotate it in a manner while throwing during that what happens the ball starts rotating in the air the ball starts rotating in the air which we call it as spin that's the reason why we call it as a spin baller okay so it starts spinning in the spinning what happens in the spinning guys there will be air above the ball there will be air below the ball correct obviously air is everywhere my question to all of you guys is from where to where does the air move high pressure to low pressure or low pressure to high pressure from where to where the air moves high pressure to low pressure or low pressure to high pressure what is your answer from where to where i know you guys are smart enough to answer that very nice correct high to low obviously the correct answer is the air moves from high pressure to low pressure always and that's why we get wind correct so when the ball spins what happens is your pressure on the top becomes high and the pressure at the bottom becomes low due to this what happens the air from the top goes at the bottom got a point the air is moving from high pressure to low pressure so when this happens it takes the air on the top goes from top to bottom and when it is doing that what happens it rotates the ball also in that manner and that's when your ball starts spinning very furiously and as soon as it hits the ground it spins back on a point so that momentum there is created due to this aerodynamics due to this movement of the baller when he is throwing the ball got my point so the air is moving from high pressure to low pressure when the air is going from top to bottom it takes the ball also with it correct as simple as that same thing my dear students same thing my dear student happens with the rocket also when the rocket is flying straight up in the air what happens is due to this pressure difference on both the side of the rocket imagine here there is more pressure and here there is low pressure the air from the high pressure comes to the low pressure area and when this happens the rocket same like the ball starts rotating starts rotating got my point now this could be the opposite way also pressure might be more at the bottom and higher at the top that is also completely fine i'm just giving you the example correct so here also pressure could, could be high here and low here that can happen but just understand this what happening air is always moving from high pressure to low pressure so when it is moving it starts rotating the rocket now my dear students the question here is is it okay that the rocket rotate is it okay that the rocket rotate any ideas is it okay like it's okay it's not okay what is the answer any ideas is it okay or it's not okay it's not okay correct so people who telling me it is not okay what could be your answer why do you think it is not okay because my dear students the rocket had to go up straight when it starts rotating what happens is ki it starts losing a bit of amount of its fuel and the fuel is pretty costly so if you start losing them unnecessarily we are got the entire country is going to go bankrupt you understand <laughs> we are completely going to go bankrupt we already have so many loans from different different countries to hum to berozgar ho jayenge begar ho jayenge hame sri lanka ja ke baithna padega so that's is going to happen so basically that's the reason take it so now to avoid that we fix the fin we fix the fin right straight forward so that when the air passes through the rocket the fin divides the air into equal amounts extra hone nahi deta hai and when the when the when the air tries to move the rocket the rock the rocket stops moving because of the fin obstructing the flow of the air if i show you the fins design again you will be very clear look at that look at that what happens the air will be trying to push the rocket in one way but the fin is there it is stopping the flow of the rocket what will happen if you try stopping a running fan if you try stopping a running fan what will happen with your hands your hands will get cut correct same thing will happen when the air is trying to rotate the rocket the fin blades will stop the air to flow so making equal amount of air to flow surrounding the rocket giving you 
the best rotational stability. That's it guys. You have understood the concept of a fin and why is there therefore amazing, right? I will tell you one more very interesting concept. But before that, let me tell you one very important thing that is nothing but this. So basically guys, this is why we guys are here for. Okay. So we have launched a course on Rocket Pro. It's starting right from 8th of November. And I'm really happy to say this that we agreed, Vedantu agreed to actually specially give you guys all the webinar attendees the, you know, the price of Rocket Pro was one triple nine. We were going to decide it by triple nine, but for especially for these webinar attendees, we have reduced down it to seven double nine. It's starting right from 8th of November and there is the link through which you can register for the Vedantu course of Rocket Pro right there. It's only a two hour course per week and it's only for 10 hours. So two hours with the five weeks every Thursday and Friday 9 to 10. And as all of you guys know, you will not only be learning the concepts of rockets and aircraft, but also you will be building them by yourself. Great guys. So the link is here in front of you the vdnt.in slash rockets. I could see many of you guys already have, uh, you know, many of you guys have already registered for it. I could see who is that. Thank you, Chandra. Thank, thank you, Chandra Pal. Great. You have already registered. Yeah, man, I know that you have already registered. Great job, guys. Great job. Awesomely well done, guys. So here is the link. Please note it down. vdnt.in slash rockets. I would say that the uh, you will be getting this link in your uh, chat right now through Vedantu as well. So please put it forward. It's vdnt.in slash rockets guys. I believe you guys have been done it. Okay. It's a 10 hour course and trust me, 10 hours what come here. We usually go to 12 to 15 hours to keep we build our own rockets. No. So when we're making our own rockets, obviously time will get extra. So keep it in mind that 10 se thoda ho sakta hai, to but karenge hum zaroor. Launch bhi karenge. Okay. Okay. Now, coming back to the point, coming back to the point, please note down this particular link. Don't forget. Here is the question which I would like to ask. The concept of center of gravity. What is the concept of center of gravity? Now, how many of you guys have done this? Give me one second. How many of you guys in schools show off by taking up a book and start rotating in your fingers? Oh my God, I'm doing it great. How many of you guys have done this? Anyone? Shreya, it's an online course. You guys have done it. You take up the book and start showing off by rotating it. How many of you guys? Girls, though, I don't believe they do it, but boys, I believe, must have done this. Yeah, right? No, I believe that when I said this, many of you guys must have taken up the book and tried it right now. Correct? Many of you guys tried it right now. No, I can do it. 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 Yeah, I know, I know, I know you guys have done it. Exactly. Correct. Great job guys. So basically how you guys are able to do this? How are we able to balance any object in our fingers? Many of you guys might be playing football. Many of you guys might be able to play basketball and many of you guys are able to balance the balls and everything, you know, actually in one finger. So how are you able to do that? Because my dear students, you have kept your finger exactly at the point of center of gravity of that particular object. It is that point on an object where the entire weight of the object is concentrated. That means, that means if I take this object, I'll balance it and I'll find the point of center of gravity for this. So for example, if I'm using this particular book, I can see that the center of gravity is exactly at that point. If I take that point, I divide the book into two. Exactly at point, if I divide that book into two, the book will be divided into two equal halves of same weight. Getting my point? Of exactly same weight. I can cut it from any other sides, but the weight will not be same. But exactly at the center of gravity, if I cut the book, the weight is completely balanced so that when I cut it, both the parts have the same goddamn weight. And that's how you're able to balance it. That's how you're able to balance it. Uh, Srinivasan, I mean the weight only Srinivasan, I'm not meaning the mass, I'm meaning the weight only. Okay. So guys, that's the answer. Now, to give you such a small information that is, for an aircraft, for an airplane, we'll keep, we always try to keep the center of gravity 
एट द सेंटर ऑफ द एयरप्लेन क्योंकि सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी इज आल्सो द पॉइंट अबाउट विच एनी ऑब्जेक्ट रोटेट्स करेक्ट लुक यू टेक अप अ बॉल यू ट्राई टू रोटेट इट इट विल रोटेट ओनली एट इट सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी प्रॉपरली बैलेंस्ड क्योंकि और कोई भी पॉइंट में रखू मैं इट विल फॉलो फॉर ऑब्वियसली इट विल फॉलो इट्स श्योर बट एट द पॉइंट ऑफ ग्रेविटी ओनली it will keep rotating in a balanced way isn't it correct got a point exactly keep that in your mind any doubts guys don't worry all the doubts i will answer it at the end theek okay. hai now basically same way we'll try to balance the aircraft center of gravity exactly at the center so that my aircraft can rotate however it wants so this is your aircraft it's going forward it can go up it can go down it can move left it can move right it can go straight it can come back so it can have all the kinds of motion whatever it tries to have similar way if i ask a very simple question tell me guys one second where should be the center of gravity placed in case of a rocket is it option c towards the center is it option a towards the top is it option b towards the bottom Or is it option D? None of these. What would is what would be your answer? Hey Prithvi, hi Prithvi, what's up? Great. I could see many C going on, many B going on, many A going on. That's interesting. That's nice. Come on, quickly, quickly. C top, C D. Oh ho ho ho. Towards the top. Oh ho ho. क्या बात है? A, C, B. अच्छा. Nice, nice, nice. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh my God. There are too many C's. There are too many C's and there are too many B's also. There are too many A's as well. ठीक है चलो एक बात कर लेते हैं. Let us prove it. Before I give you the answer, let us prove it कि कहाँ पे होना चाहिए. Now everyone concentrate. I take a rocket. ठीक है. Let's start from the bottom. So if I have my center of gravity at the bottom, what I'll do? I'll hold the rocket at the bottom. So the rocket can rotate about this point only. ठीक है. So you have your rocket. Lot of amount of air is coming when the rocket is going up. Correct. So what will happen? Your rocket will start rotating at that particular point. Correct. Is this what you guys want? Is this what you guys want? That your rocket should wobble like this? Is this what you guys want? I believe no. Correct. I believe no. You guys don't want that at all, isn't it? Exactly correct. I could see a lot of noise right now. Amazing guys, amazing, amazing, amazing. Correct. Exactly. This you guys don't want this wobbling at all. Nahi, bilkul nahi. Acha chalo. So towards the bottom is out of the picture. Let me put the center of gravity at the center now. Now obviously when the air will start flowing, rocket will be moving, but not as much as it was moving downward. So I mean, beach wala is okay, but still now you don't want this much amount of wobbling. Itna to bilkul nahi mangta hai, baby. तो क्या करें विल टेक द सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी एंड कीप इट ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द रॉकेट एंड माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स थिंक कैन टेल मी विच इज दैट एयर विथ सो मच अमाउंट ऑफ फोर्स कैन कम एंड नाउ ट्राई रोटेटिंग दिस रॉकेट नथिंग विल हैपन नथिंग विल हैपन यस यू नो आई विल ट्राई सो मच बट नथिंग विल हैपन टू द रॉकेट इफ आई कीप द रॉकेट ऑन टॉप हियर सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी यहां पर रखू तो कुछ नहीं होगा रॉकेट no rotation at all and that's what i need that's what isro needs that's what nasa needs that the rocket should not wobble it should go straight it it should cut through the air straight it should not like be a pendulum pendulum mitra nahi jana straight jana imagine imagine how many of you guys have heard about the falcon falcon by spacex which actually came back to the launch pad how many of you guys have heard about it you you guys have heard about it करेक्ट नो नाइस ना यू आर टेलिंग मी अन्ना प्रसाद एयर विल बी कमिंग मोर फ्रॉम टॉप नो नॉट फ्रॉम डाउन नीचे से कौन सा वर्ड वेन यू गोइंग अप यू हैव दर फ्रॉम टॉप करेक्ट यू मस्ट हैव अबाउट इट करेक्ट फैल्कन नाइन विच एक्चुअली गॉट बैक टू दी लॉन्च पैड इमेजिन इफ मिस्टर इलॉन मस्क हैव केप्ट दी सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी एट दी डाउनवर्ड वेन इज ट्राइंग टू कम डाउन यू कैन इमेजिन दिस लॉन्चिंग और यू नो सेटलिंग डाउन इन दी पैड विल नेवर है Because your rocket will be wobbling completely. Correct. He will be. He wants to put down straight. Your rocket will be coming like this. That you don't want, guys. So the correct answer for this question, guys, is nothing but option A. 
towards the top. Congratulations, guys. With that, we have completed the session today. Now I'm here sitting right now to answer all your doubts which you have. Please go forward for it. I will, I'm hearing for you guys completely. Let me know whatever doubts you guys have. Here is the link for the Rocket Pro course. Please go forward and let me know if you guys need any help. It's vdnt.in slash rockets. Thank you, Bahubali. Thank you, Bahubali. For happy Diwali to you also, Bahubali. Thank you so much. Yes, guys, go forward for it. Aisha, you don't want me to end this session. Thank you so much, Aisha. I feel very happy about that. Yes. Please explain again, Nidani, uh, Newton's laws, Newton's first law. You want more Pratibha? Okay, great. Nice. Okay, great, great guys. I want all of you guys to note down this link. It's vdnt.in slash rockets. And once you registered into the course, please send me an email. I will show you my email address also guys. The email address is here right now. k.abhishek at vedantu.com. Please make a note of it. I would like uh, Vedantu to put down the email ID in the chats right now as well. It's k.abhishek at vedantu.com. And also, please note down the link. It's vdnt.in slash rockets. I would like Vedantu to please put down that again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, guys. So now, I forgot to ask you guys. In the starting, I asked you a simple question. How to overcome the space jump concept? What is the answer for that, guys? What is the answer to that? Abhishek, that's interesting that you are interested in cosmology. That's nice. So, guys, what is the answer for that? Happy Diwali Bhumika to you also. How the direction of motion of rocket change in space? Uh, Kumar, we have uh, something called as inbuilt thrusters. So wherever we want to go, we open the thr thrusters are small engines. Okay? So engine thrusts some air out and the rocket moves this way and it goes. That's it. Okay? Good question. So you know the rocket team Indus to uh, win a Google Prize? Uh, they didn't win the Google Prize yet. I think uh, they haven't. Okay. Great. Okay. Use of magnetism, oh, 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 physics here. Also, use them to make new ones. Low pressure, dustbin, self-destruction, happy Diwali. <laughs> Thank you, Swami. Thrusters propellant. Don't send more satellite surveys. That's a very interesting answer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is that? What is that? Nuclear blast after collecting the junk. Oh, sir, if no gas is ideal, then why apply ideal equation in chemistry? Please, sir. Anand, because we cannot go forward with a, without an assumption. We have to assume everything. Okay, okay. okay. Sir, how do you know the rocket team industry? Okay, one second. Uh, by sending big rockets. A rocket which sort of store the junk and get it in outer space. Hmm. Reuse them, Jyotsna. Hmm. That's interesting, guys. To travel faster than the speed of light. Uh, yes, science and maths are the best. Yes, we can actually uh, go forward for it. But the wrap drive is actually a long, far-fetched concept which you have to go forward. Ah, Pratibha, exactly. <laughs> Prithvi, I still remember Spider-Man technology by you. I definitely remember. We should launch a space shuttle which can catch all the waste. <laughs> Interestingly, guys, hear me out and tell me. Hear me out and tell me. Guys, very clearly, agar the rockets, the satellites are there in space for a long time. So it's pretty obvious that in space, we have a lot of radiation. So these satellites must have been affected by these radiations. Yes or no? Correct. So do you think it is safe for to get those satellites back into ground? Do you think it's safe for us to get those satellites back into ground for reusing? Yeah, is this? Yes, it's safe. Oh, is it so? I don't think so. I don't think it is actually safe to get. No, right? Exactly. Very good. Exactly correct, guys. Awesome, well done. It's not, it's not safe at all. Correct. So what do we do? What do we do? Do you guys know about meteorites? Meteorites? You guys know about it? As soon as the meteorite come near the atmosphere of the earth, they start burning. Correct? Because of the atmosphere, they start burning. Isn't it? Can't we do the same thing? We will pull all the objects towards the atmosphere so that due to the atmosphere itself, the parts start burning by themselves. And by the time they reach the ground, they are ashes. Correct. So, we will do something like pull it down. And actually, this idea has been already worked out by Euro European Space Agency 
obviously from Europe. They are working out on this particular thing to pull down the space junk into the atmosphere so that it can burn off. Okay, great guys. Ah, correct. Great job. <laughs> yes, Harshi, exactly. Great job, guys. Great job. So, guys, I believe all of you guys have noted on the link and uh, all of you guys have noted on my email ID also. So, with that, guys, we'll end the session for today. I was very happy. Uh, yes, Prasad, tell me what is it out. Go for it. No, Kumar, it will not pollute because it's burning. It's not producing any smoke, correct? Nice. Send them in black holes, Almas. For, for that, we need to first find out the black holes. <laughs> great, great, great. What if it's burned partially? So Bahubali basically will burn it in a way that it will, even if it's something is left, it falls in the oceans. So again, safe for us. Next one. Can we control a spaceship far away from Earth? We always do that, Nihar, by controlling uh, the satellites far away from Earth. All the satellites which have gone into Pluto, uh, which has crossed the solar system, which is Juno. You know, we all do that. Correct. How do we pull the junk down, Janak? We, you know, we just hold, we just... Uh, you know, have you seen Batman movies? You have seen the uh, long cable which goes and sticks inside the wall. Same way, we'll capture the uh, uh, junk and we pull it down. Simple. Uh, okay, the course is uh, open for all 6 to 10 standards of student. So it's completely open. Even 11th and 12th standard students are welcome. So there is no doubt about it. Okay. What is catapult effect? Universe, sir. Catapult effect is when you use the gravitational field of any planet to actually move around. That's called as catapult effect. Great. Uh, okay, one second. Rosemary Ivy, I have a question. When a plane take off under, uh, and reach certain height, will it go to the space? Uh, Rose, it can definitely go into space. But the problem is, aircrafts cannot uh, fly without air. And as you go move, uh, as you climb up in terms of height, the air density keep on reducing which might shut off their engines and hence your aircraft might not reach space. Okay, very good question by the way. Aman, good. Aisha, doubt, yeah, let me know. Ball na high pressure upar kyu hota hai? Aman, zaruri nahi ki high pressure upar hi ho. Neche bhi ho sakta hai. Aisa kuch nahi hai. Mere bas example diya tha. Okay. Okay. Which class course, Joshil? It's open for from 6 to 10 standard. Completely fine. Uh, air is conductor or insulator. Knowledge bank, sir. Air is... Uh, conductor, there is no doubt about it, I believe. Can we create portals near Earth for doing interstellar? What is magnetic? Okay, great. Sir, uh, whether we can make rocket which can go into black hole, uh, Niveda, maybe in the future we will definitely do it. Use of exploding material, huh? Aryan, we can do that also. Uh, ashes, uh, infin infinity masters, uh, meteorites. Small, small amount of stones always keep falling on the earth. Actually, if you don't know about that, because we keep on saying, seeing this uh, shooting stars, you know, shooting stars, shooting stars are actually not stars. They are meteors only. So we keep on seeing them once or one divide. So it keeps on happening. So you have not found any ashes yet, right? That's it. Keep that in your mind. No problem, Joshin. Okay, guys. Okay, okay, okay. So guys, uh, any other doubts which you guys have, you can always, I think, uh, note down my email ID and ping it to me directly. I'll show you my email ID directly here. Yes, this is my email ID, k.abishwetdirotvedantu.com. If you guys have a really genuine doubt and if you guys are interested in the course, uh, go on to the link and register for the link. And if you guys are interested in this particular, uh, you know, asking any doubts, here is my email ID. You can note it down, send me as an email. Also, let me know, guys, how do you like the webinar today? Was it interesting or not? With that, guys, we'll end the session for today. We'll see you guys on Sunday as well. I'm going to take the same webinar on Sunday also. So if you guys are okay with it, you can join me on that day. Okay. So bye bye guys. Good night. Take care. We'll see you guys in the next session. Until then. Bye. All the best. Bye guys.